Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday the 30th of August. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device in the book Common Worship Daily Prayer from Church House Publishing in the Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Time section, Morning Prayer on Friday. If you are following in the book, you might like to look up the 30th of August and pick up the Lesser Festival of John Bunyan there. Uh, I shall be reading from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints shortly, but there are one or two adjustments, like the opening and closing refrain for the um, Song of Zechariah when we get there, uh, and the collect, and perhaps the canticle. You are welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, any of the above, or at the same times by Zoom, the Zoom code on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. We would be live streaming, uh, we are live streaming, I think, on uh, Facebook. We would be on Zoom, but the um, internet connection is down, the Wi-Fi box is on. But uh, hopefully once that's restored, we'll be back on that again um, in the future. But uh, all these various ways of joining in, uh, the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel later. <clears throat> o Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Psalm 95, a song of triumph. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. And kneel before the Lord our Maker, <clears throat> for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh that you would listen to oh that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your heart as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so with the light of our, your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Two psalms this morning, you'll find those at the back of the book, 142 and 144. Psalms 142 and 144. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. I cry aloud to the Lord. To the Lord I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him of my trouble. When my spirit faints within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, have they laid a snare for me? I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who teaches my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My steadfast help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust. He subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are mortals that you should consider them? Mere human beings that you should take thought for them. 
They are like a breath of wind. Their days pass by like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast down your lightnings and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and let thunder roar. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters from the hand of foreign enemies. Whose mouth speaks wickedness, and their right hand is the hand of falsehood. O God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-string harp. You that give salvation to kings and have delivered David your servant. Save me from the peril of the sword and deliver me from the hand of foreign enemies. Whose mouth speaks wickedness and whose right hand is the hand of falsehood. So that your sons in their youth may be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters like pillars carved for the corners of the temple. Our barns be filled with all manner of store, our flocks bearing thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our cattle be heavy with young, may there be no miscarriage or untimely birth, and no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people whose blessing this is, happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Scrolling past our first reading, the first instance to find the Song of Humility back in morning prayer on Friday. <coughs> I think this is probably the standard Friday morning one. Refrain begins, raise us. But if it doesn't turn out right, you might like to pause if you're following in the book and uh, look up today's date, 30th August, and uh, find direction there. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Apologies for our um, rather extraordinary roof alarm going off during the psalm, sounding a bit like a cross between a police car siren and a more version of and uh, public announcement. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Born at Elstone, Bedfordshire in 1628, John Bunyan was largely self-educated and used the Bible as his grammar. He read very few other books and they were all piously Protestant in nature. Yet, he produced the Pil- Pilgrim's Progress, probably the most original text of spiritual genius this that century, telling the story of the man Christian on his journey through life to God. It was not written while he was a prisoner in Bedford jail, as often stated, but during a confinement some years later. History tells us little of the man, but what is clear from his writings is that the salvation of the soul was what mattered most to him. He died on this day in the year 1688. (coughs) An excerpt from his writings, which I shall read later at uh, evening prayer. I assume we all go to God's plan, and I'm here at six. Next Bible reading, 2 Samuel from uh, chapter 23, verses 1 to 7. You'll find Second Samuel about a quarter of the way into your Holy Bible if you've got both covenants there. Electronically, it's just before the canticle read um, a moment ago if you're following um, the service. You can find it online by typing those figures in too, I'm sure. Second Samuel, chapter 23, we're reading from verses 1 to 7. So the book of Second Samuel in the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures, we give the large number 23 in margin, chapter 23, and we're reading verses 1 to 7 and the verses are the small numbers in the text. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed, the God of Jacob, the favourite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me, his word is upon my tongue, the God of Israel has spoken, the rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over God people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God, for he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure, will he not cause me to prosper all my help and my desire, 
but the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hands to touch them. One uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. <coughs> so, um, just reading the text and interpreting it, it seems to me fairly unlikely that David actually uh, wrote this about himself. It's possibly unlikely that he actually said these words, but as we know, um, in the Hebrew psyche, in their tradition, in their culture, the religious Jews at any rate, and indeed Christians, I'm picking up on this, reading through um, the Jewish text, have become a uh, um, Greek Christian uh, foundation of scripture, that David is a significant figure, a significant king. He is um, magnified in the texts and writings about him as here in Second Samuel, the stories in the history section. Um, he, the Psalms are all attributed to him, just as the Pentateuch is all attributed to Moses. The modern scholarship suggests that, uh, and indeed our reading of them, they're quite, some are quite different each from the other, and some, just in reading them, suggest it's unlikely he uh, penned them, and they come from different times and dates and so on. <clears throat> and there are sort of various hints that... Uh, these texts were written much later than he was around. Um, nevertheless, um, this could have been written by those who loved him uh, at the time of his death, and or much later to maintain the, the cult, the worship, the veneration of him as a great hero of faith. But it doesn't in any way, I don't think, belittle uh, <clears throat> these words, um, as David, um, to some degree, is a metaphor for God. Um, Jesus is David's son, <clears throat> um, Bethlehem, Jerusalem are David's towns and cities. Um, and God chose David. David spoke for God. David, to a greater or lesser extent, was God as he was the monarch, the ruler of God's people, God's mouthpiece, just as to a greater or lesser extent we, as living stones full of the Spirit, are God's the people amongst whom we live. And uh, we are them towards God um, as we share in the priesthood of all believers. <coughs> so here we've got... Um, an excellent example of uh, an announcement. I could think of a town crier, although they're slightly comical, one might say. Um, forgive me if you're a town crier. Um, but uh, here we've got the word oracle repeated twice. So we know this is God's word through David. Um, we've got that's the last words of David. So last words are always, even then and now, significant. Um, and he's described as being anointed of God, favourite of the strong one. It's favourite of God, anointed and favourite. So both of those, that's repeated. Anointed and favourite, to some extent, saying the same thing. This is God's word of david and david was god's man <clears throat> we go on the spirit of god speaks through me god has spoken so we've got that repeated again just to make sure we know um, who is like my house so that's the temple god's temple it's the um, dynasty of david uh, and it's the rules of that word house as with us today has a, a multiplicity of meanings um, everything attached to that everlasting covenant will prosper but the godless will be burned like fire on the end of an iron rod and uh, so if we choose, we may engage with the godly side or be burnt up like uh, grass on an iron rod. We pays our money, we takes our choice. We can consider following rulers and uh, pray for those who we feel um, God is working in and through and venerate them and up, hold them up as examples to those whom we feel are lacking. Acts 12 from 18, then our next reading, scroll on to that, Acts 12 from 18. <coughs> And uh, Acts, you'll find after the Gospels, um, about a quarter of the way into the last third of the Bible, the Greek scripture, the Christian material. Uh, so we look at the book of Acts, we're looking for the last of 12 in the margin, chapter 12 in the book of Acts, and within chapter 12 we're reading for verse 18. So we're starting to read at verse 18 from chapter 12 in the book of Acts. Scroll on to that, if you will, online. When morning came, there was no small commotion among the soldiers over what had become of Peter when Herod had searched for him, could not find him, he examined the guards and ordered them to be put to death. Then he went down from Judah to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, so they came to him in a body, and after winning over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for reconciliation because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat on the platform, delivered a public address to them, and the people kept shouting the voice of a god and not of a mortal. And immediately, because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to advance and gain adherence. Then, after completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem, brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. <coughs> um, 
So um, we can tell that this character, um, Herod, is a lovely man. Uh, <clears throat> Peter has uh, escaped. We read yesterday that it was some sort of strange, depending on how you interpret it, either an actual or a figurative, somehow or other he was in prison and he wasn't. An angel, maybe an angel, went and woke him up and doors opened as he left and the chains fell off um, by magic. <coughs> and then he finds himself with a group of believers at uh, John Mark's mum's house. <coughs> the women whom Jesus healed, and they didn't recognise him at first because they were so busy praying for his release, they didn't believe he was actually free. <coughs> um, when the, it was discovered that the uh, prisoner had escaped, as we read here, there was no small commotion among the soldiers, and these would have been probably conscript soldiers who would die if they didn't perform their duty. Soldiers themselves, just given that brief privilege, which meant, of course, they were particularly cruel as a rule, taskmasters, and as was typical, they died, uh, because they had let a prisoner escape. Herod isn't um, punished for that, however, but he is punished for not giving glory to God when a group in the crowd said, this man is God, which is uh, quite intriguing, because given what we've just read about David, David was ruler, David was attributed with uh, deity. Um, Herod was treated in the same way, but because he didn't say actually no or not, um, nor did David, rather than um, David being eaten by worms, David has the accolade throughout the centuries, here, yeah, Herod sadly um, is struck down immediately and eaten by worms. <coughs> it says he's eaten by worms before he dies, or at least eaten by worms and died, rather than died and eaten by worms. But it's a very glorious and presumably quite uncomfortable end. Um, but there's an interesting little comment there that um, the Hebrews gave food, or the Jewish people uh, in Herod's land, uh, Greek area, and that's, I guess, why the Greeks were there. It was a food basket. The Greeks would have been, like colonialists today, it would have been helpful to them to have food being provided in one of their around ports they traded with. <clears throat> Tyre and Sidon were the ports, so God's people got um, maritime wealth from Tyre and Sidon in, rea in response for food that they produced. Um, so that's how it works, an explanation there, because uh, the coast of uh, the Holy Land isn't ideal for... Uh, seafaring, so they weren't particularly enamoured of the sea, as their culture and comments through the scripture elsewhere attest. Um, and then, although the um, Herod, the puppet ruler, has died, um, God's word advances and gains adherence, and uh, John Mark joins Barnabas and Saul. Let us be wary, therefore, of um, taking the um, praise for ourselves, uh, I have to say that I'm happy to accept that there are things that I've done, said and learned and talents and gifts that I have um, that are from God and that I have put time and effort into nurturing and growing those and allowing those to flourish. Um, but I wouldn't in any way want to say God wasn't involved. And if anybody were to say, um, oh, look at you, I would say that it's only the people I'm amongst and God who is in me that has made me the person I am. And uh, we need to be wary, otherwise we may well be um, taken down a peg or two and uh, taught a lesson. <coughs> and if we place people on pedestals, we are culpable ourselves. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God, the response read. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God, make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation, be not far from me, O my God, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Song of Zechariah, <coughs> common of teachers, I'm imagining, uh, join in at Blessed Be, or pause a while, look up the 30th August, John Bunyan, and you'll find direction to the opening and closing sentences for this Song of Zechariah, to which we scroll on if we are following electronically. <clears throat> those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This is the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Sacrifice, Saviour, seal, three in one, one in three. We thank you for your self-giving for us as an example and an inspiration that we might be self-giving too. The confidence that you had in yourself, we pray that you grant us by your spirit that we need not strive, but that we might uh, put to death that uh, jealousy and envy, bitterness and hatred, that there might be in you light, life, joy, hope, that uh, sickness, brokenness, death will be destroyed and overwhelmed and uh, the powers of life and love and joy truth will flourish <clears throat> we pray for those who need that today you need to express that you need to feel and know that today that that breakthrough that that challenge will be known to them in their circumstance and situation World Council Church's prayers for Cape Verde, Gambia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Senegal continue. We are thankful for the promising transitions into democracy and changes in government leaders. We pray for faith communities witnessing and working together for the common good. From Christian Action Research and Education. We thank God for everyone involved in Christian mission in UK sport through chaplains, youth organisations, sports associations and teams and other ministries. Please empower them to share the gospel among the 30 million who engage with sport. <clears throat> Tony Green Christian, we pray for our forthcoming climate conference on the food and farming. Thank you for all the effort that's gone into that, all that are going to be contributing, all that have already. Signs are starting to go up around town, beginning to build momentum and excitement. <clears throat> Very significant for the town and the environment around and beyond. Last year, once you haven't had a Lammas, Celebration in the church this year we did last, and it links very closely. Next, hopefully, we will. Only because people are poorly and otherwise engaged. So, um, we thank you that you have set us right in the heart of that movement here in the North East uh, Suffolk. From Green Christian, then, whale sharks are listed as endangered, which means they are at risk of extinction. Oh, okay. I wondered what endangered meant, he said sarcastically. Um, according to Kelly Whitehead, um, and then it goes on to describe um, the shark saying that the population has declined by 63% in 75 years. Um, it's one thing that I just can't really understand how we've been alive for um, over 50. Mm. I would have thought that things would have all been turning round in my first sort of, after my first 20 years of life. I knew at 15, if not before, that we need to do what we needed to do. But um, obviously I haven't done enough. And those in my generation haven't done enough because we're still destroying hand over fist. So I'm not sure that there is hope but um, the Anglican Communion feels there is and their fifth, fifth mark of mission is engagement with creation and an environment <clears throat> and uh, so I've serialised Pope Francis' prayer for creation throughout the week teach us to discover the worth of each thing to be filled with awe and contemplation to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light You know, benefit cycle prayer on Fridays. We pray for our voluntary organisations, the community groups, and so we do for the uh, shop at the um, Hopper Community Transport, for the Health and Volunteer Centre, primarily drivers for um, getting people to appointments and getting their prescriptions to them, and shopping, and also supporting us in the community larder. We pray for those um, who look after the green and the um, flower beds. Those who look after or support library and schools, our own PCC, the Lions, the other Christian, other faith groups in and around the town. They see support working together across the businesses and a couple of three major events across the year, like the electric light switch on. We pray that you grow these at the um, Day of Dance. We thank you for all those who put their time and effort in. The pear tree, I've forgotten that. May they recruit sufficiently to maintain and build capacity to uh, engage with their issues, their aims and objectives, and uh, within that capacity to fundraise 
to support those activities. Pray the same for ourselves. We need another warden. We need a treasurer desperately and two or three other positive people who can bring inspiration and other connections and contacts with them. We pray for our PCC, St. Michael Cookley, St. Margaret Heveringham, St. Mary Hunterfield, St. Mary Walpole, Jane as our warden in the first, Jeanette in the second, Emma in the third, Lee and Ken sharing at the fourth. We've got some names for those on the role at Cookley, Roy Roberts, Karina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Alan Dooney. Thank you, Dooney's joined the BC, or at least was at our last meeting. At Huntingfield, we've got names, David, Jenny, Susan, David, Marin, Patrick, Sally, Ann, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Par Barry, Jackie, Jane, Tony, Judy and Sue once more. And uh, we pray blessing on those, those associated with those churches and those places. We pray we draw people in. Um, we could do with another church warden at uh, Cookley, Heveningham and Huntingfield. We need a treasurer and a secretary at Cookley. Um, but I think we're well placed at the others. And thank you for the support, for the energy that... Um, having a wall pole are showing from which uh, examples from which we may learn we pray that you draw two or three more into um quickly um that they might be able to turn that same corner and hunting field to be doing well um not to uh, overlook their contributions um and again an inspiration two strong people two or three strong people we could do again with uh, a few more to ease the burden share the love and uh, develop their capacity to use that building even more. Well worth a visit to see its roof painted by the wife of a previous vicar a hundred plus years ago. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pani Rokhishan Dira Baha Maru Hadam Ilya Kishiri Ma Hazan Ashtu Rokhasam Ilya Kishiri Baha Maru Hadam 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 Ilya Kishiri God of peace, you call your servant John Bunyan to be valiant for truth, grant us to strangers and pilgrims that we may at the last rejoice with all Christian people in your heavenly city through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube. And thanks.